Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part one of a Unity series on making modular textures. Now what I mean by modular textures is that we're going to be taking multiple image files, like the ones we see here where we have some eyes, um, some heads, and some mouths, and combining them, as we see the uh, game doing here, into these single images. If I actually pause this for a second, and we go to this image and focus on it, you'll see that this is just one image. It's not the three separate game objects that we would have originally had. It's making it into one image. And there's a few uses for this. Uh, one in particular is for creating um, procedural content in your game. Say you have, you know, multiple alien races or multi people that, you know, look different ways you want to look differently. Even um, you could create, like, say, planets that have different land masses and different atmospheres and things. Various ideas like this. Um, Instead of having to make, you know, dozens or hundreds of these different items, you can make a handful of components and then just combine them into a single image with, you know, almost infinite variety. Um, another option is if you have, uh, say, a custom player avatar that you want to let your player set their hairstyle or, you know, if they're male or female or the shape of their head, things like that. This is another great way to do that, and then you can simply save this to an image file that saves on their computer, and you just load that up whenever you need it. A couple of options there that um, you can use this, um, this technique for your games. So, this first video, we're really going to be talking right down to the basics of what a texture is, because if you don't understand how textures work, you can't really make the most use out of them, and then ultimately use them in their, for their final purposes. So, when we talk about textures, we usually think a texture, you think something that's going to be added to a material that's then going to go on to, you know, a 3D object that you're rendering in your game. But textures are actually used for pretty much anything graphical in Unity. They're used for materials, yes, but they're also used for sprites, they're used for your UI images, they're used for particles, and they're used for a number of other things as well. So, what is a texture? A texture is basically a grid of color information. Um, Technically speaking, it's an array of color information. It's just a really long list saying red, red, blue, light blue, green, yellow, just letting you know what every single pixel in an image should be. For our purposes, it's also worth noting that we're, we're not just talking about textures, but specifically about textures 2D. There's texture 2D and texture 3D in Unity, but a texture 2D is that you know, simple X, Y grid of color pixel information that we're used to. So whenever you're typing this into MonoDevelop or whatever you're using for coding, you want to refer to texture 2D. And there's really five things you need to know right now that are kind of the basics of a texture. And these are, uh, number one, the width. Number two is the height. Um, those two are pretty basic. They are, you know, letting you know how, how wide each row is and then how many rows there are total in your image, and that's how it, how um, Unity or any really image processing program is able to know from a giant string of pixels what the actual squared up image is supposed to be. Um, in addition to those, there are three functions that are really useful to us. The first one is called set pixel, and with this we can give a um, X and a Y coordinate and give it a color, and it will set that pixel to that color for us. Uh, that's going to be really important when we're procedurally generating these um, these textures for ourselves. Secondly is get pixel, which is um, we give it an, again an x and a y coordinate, and Unity will find that pixel, which again is obviously important here because we're going to be taking pixels from existing images and then putting them into our own custom image. And then lastly, um, we want to make sure we remember the apply function. Whenever you do use set pixel, you have to make sure that after you're done setting all your pixels, you apply them. Otherwise, it won't actually show up in your game. It will just revert back to what it was originally. So those are the five things you need to remember for textures. So the other thing that's a little bit tricky about textures and why if you've gone into this before you might not have had success is that a texture just doesn't appear in your game. You can't just drag a texture onto um, onto your game. In order to get yourself from a texture you then have to take that texture and either make it into a sprite or add it to a material. So let's get started and actually put all this kind of into practice and um, make it a little bit clearer. So let's go up to file and create a new project. I'm going to do this in 2D, and I'm going to call this Texture Maker. And no need to save that. 
So, in this scene, we are going to add one quick object, 2D object, sprite. At first, nothing actually appears in our scene, and that is because we don't have a sprite attached to it. We're going to be actually creating that sprite with a class. Next, we're going to do, we're going to create that class, create C Sharp script, and we're going to call this, we're actually going to call this Sprite Maker, because like I said, we're going to create a texture, but then we're going to actually put that into a sprite, which is going to appear in our sprite renderer. We can drag that onto our new sprite that we have here. I'm going to rename this to Sprite Maker too, so we know what we're dealing with here. Now we can jump into Mono Develop. Zoom in a little on this. And the first thing we're going to do is that we're actually going to um, make our sprite maker require a component. We want to make sure that if we're using a sprite maker, that we have a sprite renderer on the same game object. So I'm just going to say require type of sprite renderer. Part of the reason for that is that the first thing I'm going to actually create here is a sprite renderer variable. And this I'm just going to call rend. And when we first start our game, I want to make rend equal to get component sprite renderer. We can actually get rid of update. We don't need that. And so all that's doing, if we jump back to the inspector here, is now making sure that sprite maker knows about the sprite renderer. So the end result of all this is that we are going to, actually if I jump back again, we see that Sprite Renderer has this sprite, and so what we want to do at the end of this is assign our procedural sprite to rend dot sprite. But right now we don't have anything to give it, so I'm not going to write that out because it's going to be an incomplete line and Unity's not going to like that. So to start though, we need to create a texture, and then we need to create a sprite from that texture. So to create the texture, we start out simply by saying texture 2D, remember that 2D, we'll name it tex, simple enough to remember, equals a new texture 2D and we have to give it a width and a height. Uh, let's just make this one 8x8. Eight eight. Size isn't particularly important at this point, but that'll be small enough that um, if we want to start um, getting a little bit into finer detail on it, it won't be too crazy. Um, next, we've, we're going to need to go through all of the pixels. And we're going to need to go through width and height. So we're going to say for int x equals 0 x is less than text.width. We could just say 8 here, but if we were to change our width or height, um, this way we don't have to keep on going through our code and changing every um, everywhere that the 8 appears. We can just keep it that way. It'll do it for us. And then lastly, we'll say x++. And same way, we're going to say, so I'm just going to copy and paste this, because we're going to say for y equals 0, y is less than text dot height y plus plus. Always be careful if you're copying and pasting uh, for loops because if, if an x ends up in here somewhere you can easily create an inf infinite loop that will crash unity on you. Now all we have to do is say text dot set pixel x y and then give it some color. We'll say color dot red for now. And after all of that, all we have to do is type in apply. Like I say, make sure you have apply, or whoops, text.apply. Um, that will apply all of these pixels we've set to our texture. Mm -hmm. Lastly now, all we have to do is um, create our sprite. So we're going to say sprite, new sprite, equals, and sprite has a nice little function called create. 
And you see it requires three things. It requires the texture 2D, that's the texture that we created. It also requires a rect. And the rect is actually going to say which pixels from our texture 2D do we want this sprite to be. If you've done anything with atlasing or, you know, um, if you've put a sprite sheet into Unity and you know that you can make, like, you know, you can get multiple sprites out of one image. That's basically what we're doing here is we're saying from this texture, I want this particular chunk of it to be a sprite. And in this case right now, we're just going to use the whole thing, but we still do need to set that rect. Lastly, we need um, the vector 2 pivot. Um, this is kind of, sh this is where the kind of anchor point of the image is. For now, we're just going to keep it right in the middle of the image. So I'm going to say create. Uh, for our texture 2D, we're just going to put in text that we created. For our rect, I'm going to say new rect. And I'm going to give it, you'll see here there's four ways of putting it in. I'm going to do the very last one, which is use your starting X and Y, and then the width and the height. So our starting X and Y, we want this to be the whole image, so we're going to start right at 0, 0. And then for the width, I want the width of the texture, so text.width. And for height, I want the full height of the texture, so text.height. Lastly, the vector 2 pivot, um, like I say, is going to be right in the middle, and it's um, it's on a scale from 0 to 1. So I'm just going to say vector 2.1, which would be 1, 1, but I'm going to multiply that by 0.5f, so it be 0.5f, so it becomes 0.5.5, you know, right, right in the middle. Save that. And last but not least, all we need to do now is assign this rend.sprite equals the new sprite we created. So now when we go back over to Unity, go to our sprite maker. I'm going to focus in on it, which actually right now it zooms out because there's no, um, there's no actual object there for it to really focus on. And now I'm going to save this scene quickly. I'm going to call this texture example, and we'll hit play. Now what we should see is that a text, a sprite appears here. Um, it won't have a name. Hit play. Sure enough, we've got a sprite. No name here. We see a little red dot on our screen here. And if I focus in now, if I click the sprite maker and focus in here, now we see it here. This is our um, 8 by 8. If I zoom in a little bit further, you can see here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sure enough, 8 by 8 pixels in size. Uh, this is the texture we just created. We made it red. If we were to change the color, it would change the color here. If we were, to, and then we can even start to do things like, say, create a gradient by changing every row's color. Um, or eventually, what we'll be doing is actually taking an existing image, copying its pixels into this image so that we can layer them onto one another for our complete layered modular texture. So but this is where we're going to cut this one off, keep it um, short as possible here tonight. Next time we're going to get into some ways to optimize our script and start to have a little bit more control over how we create these textures. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.